Good morning and welcome to our weekly word. It's good to be with you today. Uh, we've got a cold front on the way, so we are basking in the nice 75 degree days right now, but the cold weather is coming, so buckle up. Uh, just praying for rain because we sure could, use, sure could use some. This morning I just wanted to take a moment to to focus on Dr. MLK Jr. and just what he tried to achieve in reminding us that the divisions that we create among ourselves, whether it's racial or other divisions, are really not helpful and not a part of what it means for us to be children of God. Let me share with you a word from Galatians chapter 3, verses 25 to 29. This is from the message version. But now you have arrived at your destination. By faith in Christ, you are in a direct relationship with God. Your baptism in Christ was not just washing you up for a fresh start. It also involved dressing you in an adult faith wardrobe, Christ life, the fulfillment of God's original promise. In Christ's family, there can be no division into Jew and non-Jew, slave and free, male and female, among us, you are all equal. That is, we are all in a common relationship with Jesus Christ. Also, since you are in Christ's family, you are Abraham's famous descendant, heirs according to the covenant promise. We're all children of God. Red, yellow, brown, black, white. We are all part of God's creation. And that's what Dr. King, I think, tried to get across to the world, is that we are all created by, by the one and only God. We are all created in the image of God. We are connected, every one of us, through our creation and then through what Christ has done for us by, by his suffering and death on the cross. I mean, he spilled his blood for every person in this world. None of us could claim that exclusive claim that Christ only came for me or for you, but because he came for everybody. Remember John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, not just a part of the world, but the whole world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And there it is. I mean, in black and white, in God's word, in the scriptures. The other place that... I see this wonderful picture is in the book of Revelation. I'm doing a study on Wednesday nights right now on the book of Revelation. And there's a great, well, there's several great visions of, of God's kingdom of heaven. But one of those occurs in chapter 7, verses 9 through 12. And so I want you just to hear these words. After this I looked, and there was before me a great multitude, so that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hand, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. He goes on to keep praising and honoring God and Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who now is victorious brings all people, all his children, into that blessed kingdom that awaits all of us when we die. You know, there's still a lot of work to do in this fallen, broken world that we live until Jesus does come. And by God's grace, we've made progress. We know that progress is possible. We also know that we are accountable as people of faith. And it's the church's job to show the world, to show the whole world, that the community of Christ is called to demonstrate his glory as we come together as this great, wonderful, diverse population that God has made each and every one of us in God's image. If you think about the Christian doctrine of humanity that's revealed in the Bible, it's the only adequate foundation that we have for dealing with issues like racism. It ultimately, we do believe that every single human being is made in the image of God and reflects God's glory by his or her very existence. Either we believe that God delights in the racial 
and ethnic diversity of those in his image, and we simply refuse to believe what the Bible so clearly teaches us. And we ref when we refuse to do that, and when we cause those divisions, we are part of the problem. We are part of what divides. And when we get divided, we get conquered. Conquered by sin, death, Satan, evil. And when we make those divisions, they're not helpful. Dr. King was not perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are. And yet God calls us to work together to be the body of Christ. And I truly believe that the wonderful diversity is that God has created is, is amazing. I mean, again, think about that. They were all created in God's image. What a wonderful, wonderful idea that is. It doesn't matter what shape or size we are, what color we are. If we have, you know, some hair, no hair, partial hair, black hair, green hair, orange hair, red hair, you know, white hair, gray hair. You know, it's all a part of that wonderful diversity that God has made. And that's something we should celebrate. We should work together and not work to divide each other. Remember that we are all a part of the body of Christ. We are all children of the one heavenly Father. And we will be together in God's kingdom. So may we work for that kingdom here and now in our world today and honor people like King and others who have worked hard, who actually gave their lives for believing in what God has revealed to us in his word. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the diversity that we have on this earth. We thank you for every person that's been created, that we are all unique and wonderful individuals with the different gifts and talents and abilities that you've given to each and every one of us. And yet, Lord, you invite us, you call us, you encourage us to work together to be that body of Christ, that together we are stronger as we face the issues of sin and death and our struggle with Satan in this world. So Lord, help us not to make the divisions that are there, but to work together to be what you have called us to be, faithful people sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with a world that needs healing and hope and instead of division and anger and hatred. Lord, may we be filled with your love, your grace, your peace, and your hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to be with you this morning. Just a couple of reminders of things coming up in the near future. Uh, Sunday, we've got the mother-son bowling. Daniel's in charge of that. Good group going to that. We have February 11th. That's a Friday night. That's uh, father-daughter dance. We look forward to that event. The next night is our uh, Valentine's dinner. That will be a drive through event only this year, so uh, please call the church office to reserve uh, your meal so that we know how much to prepare for that. Also looking ahead on Valentine's Day to a Widow Widower event as well. Listen for more information on that event coming up. The other big thing that I want to talk about is our Lenten devotionals. It's that time of year again when we're inviting folks to sign up to do a devotional, to share their faith story or testimony. We've got scriptures picked. Uh, we've got uh, openings for people to do that. I want to tell you, we've done this now for several years. It has been so rich and so wonderful for each of you to share what God has put on your heart. And so those lit devotional booklets that we put together are tremendous. So if you're interested in signing up, we still have several slots left, so please call the office or get in touch with Kim Gibbs to sign up or we have we should have a sign up table out front in church during the weekend. Please again think about that oh, great wonderful devotional. We put those together for the upcoming Lent season just a little bit less than a month away. Now may God bless you in your week. Amen.